Hi, Mario. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you. We're talking so much here at Zero 100 about digitizing supply chains. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, typically there's been a wall, sometimes there's been a wall between, you know, the supply chain leaders and IT or the CIO, yeah. et cetera. So, interest, so I think everyone's looking for various models of how we integrate the two and do right. that. So it's great that your role is there and to hear about your work there is cool. Yeah, uh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> it really helps um, the synergy between the um, the two the two organizations. So if you if you think of uh, my role, I'm the ambassador of the IT organization in the supply chain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So what are some of the initiatives you're working on? Uh, what are the things that you're excited about right now at work? Yeah, yeah, sure. So when you look at Cummins, like we are a little over a hundred year old company, right? And as many large industrial companies, acquisition was always a big part of our growth uh, strategy. And with that, um, came a lot of applications and systems that were never really integrated and frankly didn't need to be mm -hmm. uh, because the, we were decentralized and it worked fine. Then over time, we realized that we could, uh, again, like many other organizations, we realized that we could do better by centralizing some areas to really um, optimize cost and better governance. Mm -hmm. on that. So we started uh, doing some of those things. And as we started going through that journey, we realized that we, while we were integrating, uh, centralizing the, the, the functions uh, within supply chain, the systems weren't. So then that's really what started that whole conversation. Should we look up our system? Should we integrate? Mm -hmm. um, and then it was a, there was a yes. It was leaning towards yes. Then COVID happened. Ah. And then it became definitely yes. We need to integrate. Uh, we need to modernize our systems. So answer to the first question was, do we need to integrate? Yes, mm -hmm. we do need to integrate. Now that we, we, that we agree that we need to integrate, how do we do that? Well, the systems we have are older and most of them cannot be integrated. So how do we get to integrate supply chain? Well, we need to modernize. Mm -hmm. So when you look up now, um, the, the traditional supply chain applications have all kinds of digital um, features built in, right? You have digital twins, you have, uh, you know, MEIO, multi echelon uh, inventory optimizations built in, you have scenario planning, you have stress planning, all of those digital capabilities are not built into uh, those traditional supply chain applications. So then we're really digitizing uh, the supply chain. So digitizing, integrating the supply chain is the journey that we're getting on now. Gotcha. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit, what were the kind of barriers? And I wanna know what went into that yes. Um, you know, what were the barriers that you were seeing to the business um, from not inter having integrated systems? And then what about COVID, you know, push that to be a, a yes, we have to do this now. Absolutely. So visibility, end-to-end -end visibility, right? visibility on your inventory levels, um, better forecasting for, for your planning, visibility for your logistics, right? Uh, better analytics for manufacturing, for manufacturing operations. All of those things um, that traditionally Weren't, weren't present in supply chain organizations, mm -hmm. right? So then driving, doing a paradigm shift around that and really thinking about 
uh, the supply chain as a digital organization because um, it, it, it is today the, the supply chain is a digital organization mm -hmm. or that's how it should be it should be looked at to really create the paradigm shift uh, that needs to happen to support some of the critical um, supply chain initiatives that going to happen within the industry over the next few years. And is there a core system that you had been using before that the systems are, need to be like upgraded and plugged into? Are you implementing new systems? How are you evaluating the kind of portfolio that you have? Yeah, so it's uh, interesting, interesting. So we had a number of different systems and num number of different applications. A lot of it came through acquisitions. Mm -hmm. So what we got to is a consensus on the type of co uh, core systems we're going to use, uh, the, the WMS and the ERP systems that we're going to use a lot core. Then the data is the next challenge, right? Getting a um, uh, central place for our data, uh, uh, getting them harmonized and all that to really give us the flexibility of um, getting more um, options on func functional applications. What's the roadmap look like? Um, I imagine this is a uh, quite intensive and a long, long road ahead to get this work done. Uh, yeah, so uh, there is no more, if you look around the industry today, there is no more appetite for long um, initiatives. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the patience <laughs> is not there. Um, so we, it cannot be a ten-year project. My, sure. We are, what my boss, our worldwide CIO, often says, well, we don't want to be um, telling the story that we are on a five-year journey of a three-year implementation that we believe will end in ten years. <laughs> right? We don't, we don't want those stories anymore. So, right. Um, so it's really using an agile approach where we can deliver value in sprint, mm -hmm. right? Delivering value, tangible business value um, in, you know, three, six month sprint and then go on and then really create a culture of continuous uh, improvement uh, within. So that's that's the goal. Because mm -hmm. when you think about the, the data to, um, um, for your for your data, you know the, 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 your master data management. That journey is really a continuous improvement journey, mm -hmm. right? You, it's, there's no destination to that. Right. Yeah. No, that makes sense too. And again, you know, there's also like the bet. Right. There's not really a destination of, no of digitization, right? Because. Mm -hmm. The technology is evolving. Your competitors are all like moving forward as well too, as you will need to be. Right, the, yeah. the goal is always moving. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like the work is, you know, where are you like prioritizing, like figuring out, you know, uh, yeah. setting up master data and then finding those projects that pack a punch, yeah. Yeah. and uh, and delivering on that as well too yeah. to have those wins. Can you talk about some of the top priority projects that you're working on? Yeah. So if you well, the the first thing. So if I if I describe the way I think about our supply chain, I think about it in terms of layers, right? So you have uh, the, the, your, your basic layer, I'll call layer one, which is really uh, your digital core, right? This is where your ERP systems are, WMS systems. Then you go to your layer two, which is your common data, your data lake. Mm -hmm. Then layer three is where you start using your functional applications. Layer four is where you have uh, your intelligence, so intelligence layer, layer four, that's where you can start using um, some of the well-known advanced analytics uh, platform. Mm -hmm. So where we are right now, we're looking at the core, uh, our core system. We have a lot of um, um, initiatives that, uh, that have already been funded, but what we're doing is really capturing the intersections of all those initiatives to really accelerate the transformation journey. So core, right now the main focus is on the core layer, which is mostly ERP systems. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, because if we go layer by layer, we're gonna be on a five-year journey, 10-year journey. Yep. 
So we're doing the core layer, we're doing horizontal and vertical work simultaneously. So what does that look like? So what it looks like is while we're building the, the digital core of ERP systems, we're starting to um, work on some of the verticals within supply chain, like planning. Mm -hmm. So the digital core is here. Let's start with planning, mm -hmm. right? And then it keep on going as you're building it. Because if not, if you build them all, just start working on your, um, your functions and that's how you end up in a 10-year journey. Right, yeah. yes. Very cool. What are the other kind of factors? You know, you sound like you have your digital roadmap planned. You have, you know, the targets of things to, to work on. Are there other kind of factors on your mind of, you know, we talked about, you know, COVID and the need for visibility, um, you know, now and are, are you, are, what are the factors kind of influencing your roadmap? What do you think are things that are both like potentially like new technologies that are attractive or like constraints that you feel you have to be ready for or operate under? Yeah, constraint. Your geopolitical mm -hmm. right is 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 always something. Um, really looking at th uh, the network, like right? instead of just uh, supply chain, how you how you look at your entire network and optimize that network, right? So we have some reshoring uh, initiatives that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. So having the right systems, the right data can really help make the best decisions, right? So placing your plant uh, closer to the demand, mm -hmm. um, uh, also your, your, your resources and your talent and all that. This is, uh, this would be an example. And other things we're thinking about is talent, yep. right? And when you, when you look at the traditional supply chain, becoming a digital organization, or well, there's an impact on the profile of the talent profile for the supply chain. So what are we looking at for the next gen supply chain? Right? So skill set is completely different. So we need to reskill, we need to bring new people mm -hmm. into into the function, identifying the profile of the, the, the next gen. Uh, supply chain talent, exciting challenges. If we're chatting a year from now, uh, what, and things go according to plan, yeah. what will you have achieved in terms of you know the sprints and uh, work on this transformation? Well, a year from now, if everything goes as planned, uh, we would have a solid digital core in place, and we would start looking at um, some of the functions and develop, uh, implementing some of the, uh, the cool uh, digital features that exist today in the, um, the next gen uh, supply chain applications, planning, um, logistics, procurement, all of those areas. Excellent. And the impact of that, or where do you see the, the big impacts? Uh, the, the impact, greater productivity, um, lower costs, because we would have less manual processes greater engagement, because some of the tools are, make uh, our ways of working a lot simpler, mm -hmm. and we could do more than what we're doing today. Kind of curious, what are the things that are exciting to you now in supply chain? What are the things that you're reading about and want to learn more about in terms of like new technology or new strategies? Uh, the digital twins is something that uh, that's, uh, that's really fascinating. I think that when you think about all the things that we could do, you know, um, doing simulations, you know, like uh, when you look at your scenario planning in logistics, you can anticipate natural disasters or a geopolitical event and coming up with alternate routes for your, for your logistics operations, things like that, really cool. And you also think about all the other use cases that are coming up. Uh, the most recent one I read about was the um, uh, the counterfeit part. So, oh, with the airlines has been in the news, well, right? With the airlines, it's it's been happening with the airlines, but it's happening everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> with if it's an electronic part, every every electronic part has a wave, and then with um, 
decibels identification, you can pick up the counterfeit versus uh, uh, the, tr the real OEM part because the, the decibels is different. Mm. The but audio waves, you're saying? Correct, because it just they they, they use the the wave what the, the what the wave broadcast. Mm. But then, if you have non-electronic parts, then you can do a digital twin of the real OEM and then have a digital twin of the counterfeit part and then you can see how they're different. You can identify them by the digital twins even though you cannot by the naked eye but the digital twin can. So then they look at it differently. Gotcha. So an opportunity like when you think about procurement how that, how that could be a major opportunity for procurement to just to catch some of those things within the chain. The other thing I, I thought about as I read the article talking about supplier relationship and thinking if we're going to work with our suppliers as a team, one of the things we could ask our suppliers is to send us a digital twin of the OEM part and that we can match against every uh, that we can use mm -hmm. against every um, every part of yes I just thought about that I wonder if it's something we could pitch to our suppliers yeah it almost works as an extra certification right Correct. of that the products coming in are the ones are the, the real the non the counterfeit real, products yeah. and then also having that you know interesting of having like those specs be part of your yeah. own digital twin if as it is going to be right. with all these other parts and so a lot of a uh, lot of opportunities gotcha. in, with digital twins with uh, advanced analytics and some of the predictive analytics we can do and you know we'll you know there's conversations around demand planning but we can really start having conversation around demand sensing you know where we can use our historical data and multiple real real time uh, data sources to do better pre prediction and improve uh, forecasting accuracy. Great. I have one other question. Do you have any advice or recommendations for our Zero 100 community? My view is uh, the supply chain is going to be the largest digital organization in the enterprise. Um, there, are, there are more digital opportunities within a supply chain than any other functions, including IT. So when you think about your career and think about um, supply chain or IT, to me, um, keep an open mind and be curious. Don't get too attached to a, um, a career path because mine was pretty uh, um, different. Yeah. You know, I did, did, it, it was not as linear as I, saw, as I thought it was going to be. And I, I frankly didn't think that I would be uh, in the role I am today because what I had envisioned was completely different. That's it for today's episode of the Zero 100 podcast, Digitally Reinventing Supply Chain. See you next time.